Mr. Walton, did you make contact with Alien? Will you take him to another planet, to a mothership? How do they communicate with them? Can you tell me what they look like? Can you tell me how many of them there were? Were you, were you given food? But the teachers are alive. They're not books. They are the very living essences of nature itself. What a strange person. Unbelievably powerful supercomputer that's running our reality, and we don't have a clue yep. as to how to operate it. So when maybe you or somebody else creates an AGI system, and you get to ask her one question, what would that question be? What's outside the simulation? Say in your mind, say to yourself, I am more than my physical body because I am more than physical matter. I can perceive that which is greater than the physical world. study in ceremonial magic was the moon because they had so much um, focus on the moon, right? Even when you first started doing your, uh, the first rituals of balancing and banishing and all of these things, they wanted you to pay close attention to where the moon was astrologically, what phase the moon it was in. And Anytime anybody does any kind of magic, knowing where the moon is and what phase it's in, it's very important. When the moon is full, crazy things happen. In fact, the statistics show that, but that could be like a fallacy too. All I can tell you is that intuitively, I know there's something to the moon and consciousness. On the tree of life, the moon is the planet that it represents Yassad right above Malkuth, and it's in the foundation the barrier of consciousness between us here on the earth and the sun and Tifereth, the barrier or the one thing that's in between us and our Christ-like consciousness. It's in touch with who we are, our emotions, our astral body. It's the one thing that helps us communicate with the soul. And the one thing I know for sure that if you're doing manifestation or magical practices that you need to pay attention to. Our guest tonight is Constant Victoria Briggs, and she'll be coming on uh, here shortly. ConstanceVBriggs.com is the website. And she wrote a book about the moon mysteries. 
the moon is probably the most mysterious and the most beautiful thing in the night sky to me. In fact, I remember when I was driving back from, uh, well, where I was uh, recently when I was away, the moon came over the mountains here on the east coast, and it was so big, kind of like um, cartoonishly big. And there's something very nostalgic about it. I catch myself, especially when I was back home in Arkansas, I would catch myself staring at the moon for hours at a time. I I feel like it has a direct connection to my soul for some reason. A direct connection to all of the things that make me feel and all of the things that make me feel very nostalgic. In fact, when I look at a night sky when the new moon is out, one of the reasons why I like having Mary on when the new moon is out is because I can't see it, right? It, it, it doesn't feel the same. And I prefer a moonlit beach more than a sunlit beach, even though I love and adore sunsets. I'm far more comfortable sitting on a beach at night with a full moon. Dion Fortune's website, The Society of the Inner Light, if you go to that website, and she was one of the original members of the Golden Dawn, the magical order that we talk about quite a bit on this show. You'll see a picture of that same thing. The moon just bouncing off of the ocean water. I remember it like, I don't know. I don't know how to say this without getting emotional, but I've been doing the show for a long, long time now. And, uh, whether you know it or not, as many people as I've talked to, as many friends as it may seem that I have, I've been in isolation for a long time, way before COVID, way before that. And before I started the show, I used to sit outside and I would like make a bonfire and listen to Art Bell. And if the, if it was a moonlit sky, it would be the best thing ever. It was the one thing I looked forward to. I loved the moon and the mysteries of it way before I learned anything esoteric about it. So it was all the more fantastic to me to learn that it actually had some real power when I started learning about it. And to get into the, the origins of it, to think about where, where the hell did it come from? There's a lot of stories about that too. There's theories that it's a spaceship. There's theories that it's not even real, that it's artificial. There's been tons of UFOs seen around the moon. We've had magicians come on this show and talk about the spirits of the moon. Astrologers like Jeff Harmon discuss how powerful it is. Then there's also the Apollo astronauts, the encounters that it seems they had on their journeys to the moon. The people that talk about the structures on it. A weird connection to aliens, possibly. There's so many different anomalies about it. It's so mysterious. It's almost like It's the eye in the sky watching us. Like that Alan Parsons Project song, you know. Then, you know, people get into, there's bases and colonies on or or inside the moon. I want to discuss a lot of this stuff. But I think when you talk to somebody about the moon, And this has been very rare in my life. 
And just talking to, talking about the moon to someone, it triggers a deep conversation. Those people are tapped into something. It's the, This is the point about the moon itself is you can't define why it's so mysteriously beautiful. And I know all of you that listen to this show and that have listened to the show for quite some time are the same type of people. That you love the night sky and that you like subjects about these things. We all inherently know that there is something directly connected to our consciousness and the moon. And in fact, if you study the Rosicrucian mysteries of the Golden Dawn, they discuss it very, very thoroughly. What it actually does that you yourself have a lunar body. They talk about this, and you look at the front cover of the book, it'll show a solar glyph coming over. Actually, it shows like a hexagram with the sun in the middle coming up above the water, but the water is a representation of the moon also. It's also a representation of female energy in some of the mysteries too, right? But more so, it's a representation of the thing that controls the ebb and flow of the waters. And what do I mean when I say that? Do I mean the ocean? Well, yeah, it does that too. And Night Stalker talks about this a lot. He brings up the, the mysteries of the rivers and the waters and how this is always brought up and it seems to always be a thing. And he's right. He has an intuition about it. He knows there's something to it. And when I think about intuition, I think about the moon. I also think about if there was no moon, we wouldn't have an intuition. And the Egyptians knew the power of the moon. Sometimes what I'm saying is, is the moon is the one thing that has kept me company in isolation. And that night that I had an out-of-body experience, I actually found my old journal when I wrote about it. I was digging through my old pictures today. And that night that triggered everything for me. The moon was bright and full. And I even wrote down that I saw it when I was out of body. I didn't even remember that. How could I have forgotten that? My dreams have been so incredibly vivid lately that I feel like it's time to get back into this, the mysteries of this, the mysteries of magic, the moon, and the out-of-body experience, and explore consciousness. I'm really tired of this COVID stuff. It's like pissing in the wind at this point, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, because there is no other choice right now than to explore yourself and your own consciousness and take care of yourself. I'm not saying don't have connections and don't have relationships. Don't talk to people. I'm not saying any of that, but what I'm saying is, is there is something going on right now and it's very lunar in nature. It's causing us to deal with the deepest parts of ourself. And when you look up the moon in astrology, what does it represent, right? Your moon sign. It represents the things that you hide the most about yourself. The things that emotionally fulfill you, but also the things that you keep hidden, that you hide from the world. And then you have your rising sign, right? But what will happen is if you can learn to use, uh, and this is what I've come to know, if you can learn to use your solar energy, which is the easiest thing for you to be, your sun sign, and express your lunar energy, you will become the rising sign that you need to become. Who you, who you are becoming in this life, right? Mine is Libra, so I have no idea what that means. 
am I am I becoming balanced? Is that what that is? I don't know. I want you all to try this with me just for like 30 days and tell me your experiences. Pay close attention to the astrological sign the moon it is or the moon is in and the phase it's in. You probably need to do this for a few moon cycles because the moon cycles are everything, right? The moon cycles run in 28 days and there are things on this earth, especially in a female nature. I don't really have to talk about the runs in those cycles and it doesn't mean uh, that that's connected to the moon, but I kind of think it is. There is a very beautiful feminine energy, spiritual energy that's connected to the moon. And when I was doing that past life regression with Daniel Alexa, and by the way, he's doing trips to Peru. He hit me up on Messenger, so I want to say hey to everybody from Daniel, but when I went through that past life regression, he took me under for like 30 minutes. But what he asked me before, and I guess it's okay to reveal this, what he asked me before was, what relaxes you the most? What makes you feel at peace the most? If you could imagine the most relaxing thing. And I told him, which is what is pretty much on the cover of the Golden Dawn book, is a sunset that turns into a moonlit beach. And then he painted this massive visual picture. It was very magical. We all tap into this in our own way. So these these uh, professional guys that can take you under, they do the same thing. They take you on a journey, right? And I remember that being a trigger for me. that I can literally imagine at any point in time, even if the moon's not out, I can go there in my mind and imagine a moonlit beach. And it takes me to the internal realms every, every single time. So what am I rambling about? In short, the mystery of the moon, the knowing that there's something about it, That's very, very real. It's very, it's very real. And my second goal, and I'm going to talk about this in the Astral Journal with the patrons, is to astrally travel to the moon. I want to see the dark side of the moon. Who doesn't? Right? People have seen all kinds of weird stuff about it. You guys remember when John Lear was talking about it, what he said, that all the stuff that was on the moon? How is that possible? I don't know if any of that's true, but he was talking about like beings of aliens and bases and all kinds of stuff up there. Night Stalker says a Sag sun, a Capricorn moon, and a Libra rising. Well, that makes sense. I'm a Libra rising too, brother. That Capricorn moon, though. Oof. That's scary. But that's good for you. But essentially, in astrology, what I'm saying is if you study your moon sign, you know how to take care of yourself. If you, know, if you want to know how to take care of yourself emotionally, just look at your moon sign. You don't have to deny it. It's not going to go away. Right? Look at what that energy is about. That's how you take care of yourself. Rambling Lunar Joe, yeah. So we're going to talk about this stuff with Constance Victoria Briggs, right? I want to know what inspired her to write about the moon, what her thoughts are on it, the origins, how it uh, relates to ufology, why am I and others that listen to the show so damn attracted to it, drawn to it. There's the one thing that really does have some kind of power, right? Over men and women alike. Can you imagine a night sky without it? And right now, the thing that makes me sick 
is that the United States, China, and Russia are literally kind of going at it right now about territories on the moon. Isn't it like us? Like, we, we, we do that enough on the Earth, you know? But now they're really kind of, like, we got a space force. There could be, I know it sounds crazy, but there could be a possible war over land on the moon. Just like that movie Ad Astra. They are not joking about moving humans to the moon. It's going to happen very soon, a lot sooner than I think we realize. I, I just think it's funny, right? Because it's literally like every science fiction movie we've ever watched that we came to love, we're about to be in. Now, there's a lot of political articles on this, too. I wouldn't pay too much attention to them. There's some people blaming Trump, saying that because uh, we didn't, because Trump didn't get along with China and Russia, that, you know, that they're fighting for mining rights on the moon, et cetera. That, you have to know when you're reading bias articles, though, right? You just got to know there's political bias and everything. But they're predicting that they're, that asteroid and moon mining could be worth trillions of pounds. And this is uh, after a metallic asteroid, which was 140 miles wide and worth, check this out, right? It was worth an estimated 10,000 quadrillion dollars. How did they calculate that? Now, this is a bias article, but this is what it says. It says, in failing to engage Russia and China in the Artemis Accords, the Trump administration has now been accused of exact exacerbating, sorry, a national security threat. This is all over the moon, which is ridiculous. There was an opportunity up, up there uh, to secure in outer space a whole massive section of the moon by engaging rushing, uh, Russia and China as partners. But, they're saying that because Trump didn't get along with them, that it has driven China and Russia towards an increased cooperation in space out of fear and necessity. So they're partnering up, and it's going to be like the U.S. versus uh, Asia, pretty much, China and Russia together up there on the moon. Now, we can look at this in history, though. When one country decides to start seizing other territories and what happens, right? It's pretty stupid. I can't imagine a war on the moon, but we have a space force, a space force. So I'm going to make a new prediction here on this show. Within the next five years, there's going to be some type of stupid war for mining rights on the moon. You watch. I don't even know what to say about it, man. Like we're we're actually gonna we're living inside of a science fiction movie. <laughs> All right, but we're we're gonna talk. That was just a side note. It made me think about that because I was reading about that the other day. But um, I still got to find the, the whole article about it, though. Maybe we can talk about it. But more than that, we want to talk about the mysteries of the moon and the esoteric stuff about it, as well as how it connects to ufology. Constance Victoria Briggs is our guest coming up after this. We're going to take a short break, and we'll bring her on. I'm Joe Roop. This is Lighting the Void. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Root. Our guest tonight is here with us, Constance Victoria Briggs. Before we get this conversation started, I want to welcome uh, our one of our first uh, affiliates, which is KFSA News Talk from Baker Broadcasting in Fayetteville. Back home in Fayetteville, that's a nice college town, so we ought to get a pretty good audience there. Uh, they're going to be replaying our shows on the weekends. Uh, uh, they're going to be replaying Lighting the Void, The Rogie Report, uh, Dave, Dave, I was going to say, uh, Dave Cruz and Alex Exum. And if you guys like any of our shows on the Fringe FM and you have a local radio station, tell them that you want to hear Fringe Late Night. You can call it the Fringe FM or Fringe Late Night and uh, have them contact us at producer at thefringe.fm. All right, so let's bring on our guest here. Constance Victoria Briggs is here with us. And... Um, we're going to be discussing what we talked about, and she's a metaphysical, spiritual, and cosmic researcher and writer, and she has authored several books, The Encyclopedia of Angels, The Encyclopedia of God, and The Encyclopedia of the Unseen World, and The Encyclopedia of the Moon Mysteries. Constance has also been a guest speaker on several radio shows discussing the paranormal, extraterrestrials, life after death, near-death experiences, as well as other related topics, and it's her goal to investigate the mysteries of the universe and how they connect to humanity. She and her family make their home there in Southern California, which is probably a fantastic place to uh, view the moon. Thanks for coming on, Constance. It's good to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me this evening. Well, I am, I am glad to have you. And I guess I just want to start this off with uh, what inspired you to write about the moon mysteries. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I'm one of those people who, has, who was always curious uh, about whether or not, you know, we were alone in the universe. I'm, I'm fascinated with the, the idea of, you know, other worlds and extraterrestrials and, you know, I'm a Trekkie. And so, um, you know, my sort of side hobby there was to, you know, ex to research and explore and try to come up with, you know, all the information I could learn on this subject. But, um, you know, I had written the books on, on angels and God and the unseen world, and this was kind of... Um, you know, I sort of stepped out of my uh, area there with the Moon Mysteries book, but I stumbled across a a little publication by the name of uh, Our Mysterious Spaceship Moon a couple of years, well, no, more than a couple of years ago, and I, it really opened my eyes. Um, this was written by a, a, a UFO researcher named Don Wilson. He... Uh, talked about all of the strange uh, things going on with our moon. I mean, this book was written in, uh, in the 70s, so a lot has actually happened since he wrote the book, too. But I didn't know un until I read Don's book that we had so many anomalies going on with, with you know, our, our closest uh, celestial neighbor there, the moon. Um, so that's what really got me started on my research. It was just uh, very eye-opening. And from there, I took it and, and kind of ran with it and, and uh, found out some very interesting information. And uh, I started collecting the stories. That's what I do. You know, I write and I, I collect the stories and I'm kind of a, a, a historian and a keeper of, uh, you know, tidbits of information. And, uh, yeah, so it turned into this, uh, this little book. Uh, that I wrote for people who uh, may have the same curiosity about uh, life in other worlds and in our moon. Yeah, it's it's really cool subject. And I was talking to the audience before this about how, you know, we are for some reason the people that love these mysteries are extremely attracted to the to the moon. Um, some of us even prefer moonlight over sunlight and I don't know why, uh, but there is an, an energy about it too, that, um, we could talk about and, uh, and intuitively, but even when you study the mysteries, they bring up the moon quite a bit and it seems to have a real connection, uh, to our consciousness. So, but before we go down that road, what did you cover, uh, uncover, or your, at least what are your thoughts on the origins of the moon? Cause there's several theories about it. Right. So basically, that's one of the most fascinating uh, parts to, to, to my story is 
learning, you know, we're taught in school that uh, the moon uh, is, a, is natural, it's normal, uh, it's, it's a big kind of dead, dry rock in the sky and not much going on there. And um, then, you know, when, when I got my, you know, hands into this uh, research, I, I understood like that, that there have been uh, five main theories to uh, the origin of the moon, and none of them, none of them have panned out. Uh, the scientist dismiss, has dismissed uh, four of them, and they still are hanging on to the um, giant impact theory, some scientists, while others have gone ahead and, and dismissed it. Um, you would think that after all of the research and studies, that has gone into the moon. And if you are a believer, and there's some people that are not, but if you're a believer that we actually went to the moon, you would think that they would have more of an idea of where the moon came from. They really don't. Um, very interesting stuff. Um, so if I could share with your audience, um, I have a favorite quote written by a science writer, um, you may have heard, know him, Isaac Asimov, who, um, sure, who once yeah. stated, well, this was one of my favorite quotes. He, well, he once stated, what in blazes is our moon doing way out there? It's too far out to be a true satellite of Earth. It's too big to have been captured by the Earth. The chances of a capture having been affected and the moon then having taken up a nearly circular orbit about the Earth are too small to make such an eventuality credible. But then if the moon is neither a true satellite of the Earth nor a captured one, what is it? Well, we don't know what it is. And I just want to tell you that uh, besides the capture theory, after that capture theory came the giant impact theory where they uh, speculated that a Mars-sized planet that they named Thea, T-H-E-I-A, hit the Earth, and when it hit the Earth, the, uh, the scientists said that the uh, material from the Earth's crust, you know, and it spewed out into, uh, into uh, the, you know, spewed out there into the galaxy and formed this sphere, and that became our moon. However, uh, when we brought rocks back from the moon, uh, when the astronauts brought them back, they learned that there is about a 500 million year discrepancy between uh, the Earth and the rock, some of the rocks. And so, you know, they're saying, oh, well, you know, that kind of throws out the whole theory that it was a giant impact um, that uh, caused the moon. So uh, they don't know. And that was the latest. So... There have been some interesting uh, ideas that have come since, come about since then. And um, one of my favorite is that the moon is actually not a natural satellite. Um, when I talk with people about this, they're, you know, they're so surprised to, to hear it. And then they're asking why, you know, why would he, they even, you know, think of that? Well, because they're... Uh, in the 1970s, two Russian scientists uh, came forward with, a, with an idea after looking at some of NASA's, inf NASA's information um, that the science, after looking at these things, uh, the, the, uh, the craters, for example, they looked at their abnormal, uh, no matter how deep a crater is, uh, they, they're all measuring the same sort of, they're all the same uh, depth, which is, of course, not normal. Uh, they looked at the materials that the moon is made of there, on the, and, uh, and they found out there are some very strange materials that they had not expected. Um, these, uh, let's see, zirconium, titanium, I, I forget, I can't <laughs> remember all of the words just at the second, but there's three of them, and these are very hard metals, and uh, they said it's not normal, that these metals would be used in armor, or they would be used in building something that you don't want uh, to be damaged. Uh, that the metals, uh, these um, materials or elements are 
so strange that they said it's completely unnatural for it to be you know, on our moon. Um, so they looked at that and they also looked at the, uh, when the uh, astronauts went up, they crashed a part of the uh, lunar module into the moon a couple of times actually. And you've all, we've all heard the saying that the moon rang like a bell. Well, it did. It, it reverberated for uh, at one point. It reverberated for an hour. The second time they did it, it was three hours. And they said that, of course, that's not natural. So these, these, these two Russian scientists looked at some of this information and they wrote a paper. They published it in um, Sputnik magazine there. And they said that their theory is that the moon is not a natural satellite, but that it was created somewhere else outside of our universe. And somehow these, these scientists who are very uh, reputable said that the, this, this object had been brought across the universe and placed in Earth's vicinity purposely. That is their theory. Um, this idea has taken off uh, lately. You know, we, we do find uh, some uh, publications talking about it, some books books talking about it. And um, yeah, it's become, you know, quite fascinating among the uh, UFO uh, community. Um, interestingly enough, along with that, is, uh, there's a uh, traditional story from uh, the Zulu people of Africa, you know, going back uh, centuries, where they have a, that says that our moon, according to their tradition, was a, they referred to it as an egg, and they said that two extraterrestrial brothers had taken a planetoid and hollowed it out, they, that they had taken out the yolk of the egg, and they had sent this thing across the universe. Um, so that is a very ancient tale, and that that's how uh, we got our moon. So I found that that was interesting, that ancient tale, and looking at the modern uh, theory by these two Russian scientists that say basically the same thing. Wow. Imagine if that is true. Would that make sense? Uh, would that make everything make sense the way things are right now? I mean, well, it, it kind of would be in a way, wouldn't it? You know, they say that, because, you know, there are a lot of, um, there's so many unanswered questions to the moon. There are so many mysteries and that the only theory that really makes any sense, even though it's so far out there, is this theory. You know, if, if, uh, if this thing was sent across the universe, uh, purposely. Perhaps this is the reason that it's landlocked. Perhaps, uh, you know, there's some speculation that maybe it's actually inhabited by, by ETs. Who knows? If it were, that would explain some of the strange uh, sightings up there, such as um, the anomaly, anomalous lights that are up there that have been seen since uh, the creation of the telescope, strange lights, um, movement on the moon, moving shadows on the moon, streaks of light, clouds, just it's supposed to be, uh, uh, there's supposed to be nothing going on up there, but there's lots of activity. Who's causing this activity? So yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's really, my favorite theory. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's really true too, because... Uh, there's been so many uh, UFO sightings on the moon, as well as uh, we have another show that we play on the network, Crow Triple Seven Radio, who who uh, he filmed tons of lunar anomalies. That people have tried to debunk them, and he's really shown them that there's some weird uh, anomalies that go across the moon all the time. You know, um, and even in the uh, esoteric and occult things that I've talked about on the show with guests and stuff, they discuss uh, some of the largest spirits that are. Uh, working with us in certain ways either good or bad are on the moon uh there it goes all the way back to the egyptians too some of the things that they've talked about you know what the spirits of the moon and it even has its own astrology so there's some whatever it is it's highly mysterious right and 
you i don't know if you've personally seen ufos on the moon but i'm sure people have re- you've probably studied tons of reports about the ufos on the moon right i have i have uh actually had a couple of uh videos sent to me uh there's one young man that is an astronomer uh who who um took some some film and sent them and you can you can see uh white objects flying around um, going behind the moon, flying around the moon, and, and some that look like they're going in and out of some sort of opening in the moon. Interestingly hmm. enough, you, you mentioned uh, moon spirits. He, uh, he is Persian, and he says um, he has also, and he showed me this, this one too, it looked like a dark sort of a, a bird-like object flying around the moon. And he said he thinks it is a jinn, which is a, magi- a magical yep. being, yep. you know, in uh, Persian uh, mythology. And, uh, you know, he really made me think because I have been looking at the idea of extraterrestrials where I do know that there are uh, uh, spirits of all kinds. I wrote the book on, on of angels. I wrote the uh, written the Unseen World book. And I know that we have many spiritual beings around and that there are entities um, for different you know, places in the cosmos. And of course, there could be spiritual beings uh, involved with the moon. Um, now, are these the same beings that would be causing uh, the anomalous lights and, and all of this? I don't think so. I think that these are two separate things going on. But just like, just like Earth, uh, you know, we have our, you know, the humans and, and the all, all of the physical here. But there are beings here that we cannot see. Uh, they're just beyond our range of sight, but they exist. And of course, I would think that an uh, object, a celestial object such as the moon, could have that going on as well so there's uh you know far more to the story uh than than we've been told and that you know i think some people are just beginning uh to open their eyes and see and and understand yeah i i discussed this with nineveh shadrach i don't know if you've heard of him but he talked to me about the jinn on the moon he wrote a whole uh, oh. book about it an entire book about the spirits of the jinn on the and talks about how they're extremely powerful and the most ancient beings on the earth. And a lot of times uh, when we read about certain spirits, even in uh, religious scripture, that they're actually talking about jinn. You know, he was Persian too. So there's a a real mystery over there that goes, I I think it, it felt true to me. It felt like there was some truth to it. Even in, even in mythologically true, so to speak, if that makes sense, you know. Yeah. Um, but another weird thing too is you know each year the moon's orbit kind of moves around uh moves about 4 centimeters away from the earth so at some point uh, in 500 million years probably it'll be like 15,000 miles further away than it is right now so it's it's kind of it does feel like it's this thing that is doing its job but like it has a job to do and then eventually mm-hmm. it's going to go away you know, you know it's, what I mean? It's going to go away and yeah. unless we have some sort of technology by then, if we're still here, that's a long time. Um, if we have some sort of technology to actually create our own um, another satellite, uh, the Earth would be doomed. Um, it's just, you know, it would do it would do us in actually uh, part of. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if it would be doomed, but life as we know it would change drastically. Yeah, sure. Inter- interestingly enough, there is um, there are some stories about there being a time when the when the moon uh, was not in the sky. So that sort of falls in, follows the, the, along the lines of the moon maybe being brought here by you know advanced beings. Um, because there are tales uh, that, that said, you know, there was a people named the Arcadians uh, who lived before the time of Job. Uh, some of the um, ancient philosophers mentioned uh, this time in their writings, and they named the Arcadians. 
Uh, they said that they were wild people, that, they, you know, uncultured, wild, just living from the earth. And uh, they, they lived before Job, which was before the belief in Jupiter, um, uh, even, which, of course, you, you know, is very, very ancient. So right, right. Uh, this, this, uh, there was a time where, where you know, the, the earth was quite different uh, when the moon came in. According to a uh, uh, old writings uh, found in Bolivia and on a sun, what they call a sun gate, um, these symbols, these writings said that the moon was brought in and uh, it caused great chaos in the earth because of, you know, the mass and it caused storms and all kinds of, of problems on the earth. But when everything settled, uh, we got, you know, a, a, a very nice uh, place that was stable to live in. Um, and there is a theory that there are several theories. At, if you look at the spaceship moon theory, which which I love, and um, the, the idea is that it could have been placed here by advanced beings for the purpose of helping Earth and helping life on it to thrive properly. Um, then there's another theory that it could be a kind of Noah's Ark sort of uh, sort of a contraption where yeah. uh, a sort of ship where people were escaping, perhaps their planet being destroyed or uh, some sort of apocalyptic event. And people uh, took this thing and got into it and left looking for somewhere to be and parked it here. Uh, it could be a, some sort of a generational ship where, you know, it just took thousands of, of years or, or however long it would take to, you know, move from one one place to the other. Um, and people could have grown up on the ship and, you know, passed and, and there's, it's just generational. Um, there was a, a, interestingly enough, there was a, I love Star Trek, and there was a show where, uh, there were people living inside of an asteroid, and it was a generational ship where these people had to escape. So it, it always reminds me of that that story. They didn't know they were on a ship. They thought they were in, in they lived inside of this thing, and they thought, you know, they were on a planet. So I, I always think, hmm, could that be the case? It could, could be. Could that be where? Hmm? Very well could be. Uh, I actually think that that could be true, too. Uh, look, uh, we were at the top of the hour already, so... If you guys uh, want to call in, we'll open up the phone lines. Just wait till uh, wait till we actually open them up to call in. What's that number? Is one eight hundred five eight eight zero three three five. If you want to join our chat room, you can go to our Discord server by going to thefringe.fm forward slash chat room. More lighting the void coming up. We'll be right back. Awesome. All right. All right. Welcome back to Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Roop. Welcome back to Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Roop. We're at the top of the hour. Actually, we're at the bottom of the second hour. Um, and... Um, we're here with Constance Victoria Briggs. We're discussing the moon mystery. I've always wanted to do a show about the moon too, Constance. So this is cool. Oh, really? Like I've okay. I've done oh my god, like almost seven hundred shows, and I've never done just a show about the moon. So I don't know why. I'm like, man, we should have done this sooner. So thanks for coming on. Oh, it's great being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. I'm. It's uh, it's one of my favorite things in the world. And speaking of which, uh, talking about the mysteries of the moon. Something that I didn't really know much about, just but I'm learning about now is the transient lunar phenomenon. Are you, you're familiar with that, right? Yes, yes. Maybe, um, maybe you can explain it to us a little better than I could. So, yeah. So the uh, tr uh, transient lunar phenomenon are are uh, basically the talking about the lights that are being seen on and around the moon. Um, 
So this this phenomenon uh, dates back for centuries, uh, uh, since the beginning of the the use of the, the telescope. People have been seeing um, shadows uh, moving across the surface. They've uh, been seeing uh, streaks of light in all different colors uh, in the craters. Uh, some of the these 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 lights are geometric shaped that you know they appear out of nowhere and disappear. Uh, maybe they're there for an hour, maybe you know several hours. Um, orbs circling about, uh, and they have no clue. I mean, up until this day, they have no idea where these strange lights come from. Um, they're especially busy uh, in, in some of the craters. Some, some craters are, are very well known and, and watched very closely. Um, this, be, this became such a, a huge deal that uh, in the 60s, uh, NASA created a publication where they had began to uh, they had chronicled all of these uh, these strange lights. They 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 wrote down uh, the date, the astronomer uh, who reported it. Uh, they uh, wrote down uh, even the time sometimes that it occurred, how how long they were there. And they created, you know, a whole publication. I actually have it. You can actually get it on Amazon or even um, if you're very lucky, you can <laughs> download it. Uh, but they wanted to, uh, they wanted also to know what was going on. They didn't find any answers. They just have a, 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 a chronicle of, of these uh, light, strange lights. But uh, it's called the transient lunar phenomena or the lunar transient phenomena is another name. And they, people are just, you know, at a loss. To explain these things, um, yeah, that might ex the, that might explain what Crow Triple Seven's been seeing because he sees a lot of those shadow uh, with his telescope, just these shadowy figures just going across the moon all the time, like all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. moving shadows, and it's, it's what I I, I I put in the book. Um, no clue what they are. Of course, as I said before, nothing should be moving around up there, right? So, so what's going on? Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty mind-boggling to think about. So it's yeah. just one of those, those things that I would like to see answered. And, and if anyone um, you know, has any speculation or any information, if you're an astronomer out there and you know, you, you've seen anything, you know, let, send me a, a note and, and let me know because I'm still collecting uh, moon stories and uh, we don't we just don't know what what these things are of course the theory is for me that there is someone up there <laughs> doing something living there or you know something's going on it's just I don't know yeah it's it's it is amazing so the, but to talk about these I mean if you get a telescope and look at it it's kind of addicting to watch it too especially if you got a good one um but then, when you, speaking of that, when you get in even closer, uh, there's a lot of mysteries around the activity and around the craters too. The craters of the moon have been uh, have shown to have like anomalies, or even uh, people say there's bases or aliens in there as well right, too. Right. So. Right. So uh, some of the craters are are even thought to be bottomless. You know, they they don't if they go down so far that there is some speculation that if they're if someone up there that they may be using these uh, nearly bottomless these bottomless craters for ships to be going in and out, for example, that could be uh, one means of, of of getting them you know in and out because there is the theory that there are beings living uh, inside the moon and which uh, would of course take us to that hollow moon theory that the theory that you know, the moon is hollow, which is why uh, some, you know, it rang like a bell. So the theory is now that the moon is hollow. Well, what's in there? Um, I, I wanted to share, let's see, uh, I wanted to share um, a quote from the, uh, from the scientist that, that I think is really cool uh, when we talk about the, uh, the hollow moon theory and, and, you know, just what, just what they, they said about this whole thing. And then I'll get back to the craters if you don't mind. Um, so in Sputnik magazine, these Russian scientists said, 
it is more likely that what we have here is a very ancient spaceship, the interior of which was filled with fuel for the engines, materials and appliances for repair work, navigation instruments, observation equipment, and all manner of machinery. In other words, everything necessary to enable it to serve as a Noah's Ark of intelligence, perhaps even as a home of a whole civilization with the idea of a prolonged, perhaps thousands of millions of years existence and long wanderings through space. Hmm. Now, right now, so if, if that were true, if someone were there, craters, lot, these large craters, with which they're saying some of them are bottomless, could be a very, you know, easy way to kind of maneuver in and out, which may also explain all of the lights uh, seen in these craters that, that appear and disappear. Um, another idea uh, is that uh, there are lots of uh, caverns within, within the moon and there are openings on the moon. And they could also be, you know, coming in and going through these openings. So, yeah, so the craters have been watched uh, very carefully. Uh, if, if, you know, if they've ever seen ships, you know, exiting them, I, I don't know. But they've certainly seen a lot of weird lights and in, in happenings up there. So, and, and with the craters. Yeah, for sure. Uh, does it, do you feel like... I mean, it would be uh, uh, too simple of a question for me to say, is there evidence of extraterrestrials on the moon? But more curious, uh, I'm curious about is, do you believe that there's real evidence of extraterrestrials on the moon? Would you consider this stuff real evidence? Oh, I do. I consider it real evidence because there's so much, you know, there's so much more than just, uh, and I don't say that lightly, but just the lights that we're seeing, the transient lunar phenomena, there are... Um, there are, are rule, what they're saying are ruins on the moon. We've heard for years uh, that, that structures were found on the moon, um, you know, from the pictures uh, taken by some of the probes that were there and sent back to NASA. Um, for those uh, of us that believe, and I, I, I do believe we went to the moon, um, you know, there were, uh, you know, photographs taken there that uh, were brought back to and um, some reports of you know of, of you know the astronauts actually seeing seeing things up there, but there are said to be things that look like uh, ruins, like there was a kind of a war of just uh, pieces of buildings are, are up there, and someone you know if that if that story is true, let's just say they are ruins. Of course, someone did that. That you know it wasn't us. So um, you know if, if if someone is causing the lights. Someone is, 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 you know, making white, what looks like white ships flying around, you know, up there in the videos that I saw. Yes, I believe this is, is all evidence of some sort of um, extraterrestrial activity. But then I am, you know, someone who is looking for that. And I absolutely uh, believe in the idea that we are not alone in the universe. And, uh, you know, I feel like we didn't get any further than the moon before we actually ran into something to someone um so if, if you look for example at, at the apollo uh the stories of, of the apollo astronauts and uh, some people get a kind of annoyed when i bring them up um but if you look no, at uh yeah at their travels uh they were all of the the uh all of the missions the apollo missions were followed by either some strange lights or some UFO. So definitely, I think that that is uh, ET connected. Now, um, they not only saw UFOs in, in lights, but you know there are some rumors that uh, the Apollo astronaut, 11 astronauts saw ships when they were there. Um, I don't know if you've heard, I'm sure you've heard that story, Joe that the yeah. Apollo, Apollo 11 astronauts, when they exited uh, the, the uh, craft, they saw spaceships of some sort sitting on the crater of a moon. And uh, they were freaked out. And the, as the story goes, 
they called on a secret line, a medical line that they had with ground control so that the uh, public couldn't hear them that were watching on television, and they reported seeing these things. Uh, we don't have any um, evidence ourselves except what some people came forward uh, that worked there and said, you know, yeah, you know, this happened. One person wrote a book and, you know, he wrote about the incident. And uh, there were also the uh, tale that some uh, people had uh, in the public had picked up these transmissions on their own private uh, radios. So I would say with, you know, all of these, this information, yeah, I think there there's ETs on the moon. And when I've talked to other people who are proficient, you know, in this field, um, you know, they, they concur. So, yeah, I, I believe they're up there, but who are they is the question. If, if they're up there, are they, are they beings that came in with the moon and have always lived there? Are they beings that are connected to ancient aliens? As some, there's, you know, stories that say that, uh, that the moon perhaps could be a, a ship by the Anunnaki. Uh, uh, you know, the, the gods of, of Sumerian beliefs that are, are, are rumored to have uh, tampered with our DNA and, could, and that they're somehow, you know, have a connection to the moon and may be on the moon. But is it them? Um, or are they beings that are, are watching? I've heard, uh, you know, the theory that they're watching humankind to see our progression. Um, when the uh, astronauts left to go, you know, on their missions, they were followed by these UFOs as if they knew what we were doing, as if they were watching. And then, um, you know, we have the rumor that because we know that those are true, those have been uh, cataloged and chronicled and, though, you know, those were real. We know that those, those UFOs existed and followed them. So the story is that they landed on the moon and, the, and that they were there watching. One person said, um, from that time that they seem to be watching to see if any help was needed. But getting back to my point, are they beings, are there beings there that have been watching us the whole time, you know, to see our progress? That's what beings, I was going to ask you, because yeah. it feels, it does feel like when it always feels like something's watching, it just, I can feel it. It's hard to explain, but I feel like something's watching us from there. You know. From the moon. That's what that's what another host said to me once. He said every time he looked at the moon throughout his life, he felt that it was uh, some sort of a satellite with you know something, someone there, you know, watching us, or some could argue watching over us. Um, you know, I, I hear a lot of people trying to say that there is some negativity, you know, going on, but you know, not all uh, is is dark. In this in this world, there were uh, twelve men are in this universe. Uh, there were twelve men that walked on on the moon. They never uh, encountered any sort of, of problems up there. I mean, there are some, you know, tales in, in in every culture of everywhere of dark and light, but they haven't found uh, had any problems up there. Uh, there is a, a story that says that we were worn away, and. Uh, so there is the idea, you know, is, is the moon uh, inhabited? Is the moon a uh, foreign nation that, you know, was always inhabited? It's, it's not Earth's moon, as we seem to think. And maybe, you know, that they didn't like us coming over there and that we were warned away. But, you know, they didn't, they didn't cause any harm. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, um, I really think that there's something to that. Like, that's the biggest thing with me. Uh, there's some kind of energy that draws me to it, the focus to it. Um, but I th you know what's hard for me uh, to get my head around is beings actually being inside the moon, right? Um, now, I did read a book by Samuel, Samuel on Vior. He says there's beings inside every uh, planet or whatever, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're physical bipedal beings like we are. Uh, they could be right. interdimensional or things like that, but... Uh, right. It does ring like a bell, which can, which does make it seem like it's hollow. So there's, yeah, I mean, there's some good thoughts on that too. Beings inside the moon, right? 
Um, have you heard of Ingo Swan? Yeah, yes. Uh, okay, sure. so do you, I don't know if you know his, uh, his moon story, but um, I'll share it. Okay. So he was a remote viewer who was uh, very prominent in his field, and he was uh, um, recruited by a gov uh, gov secret government agency to remote view the moon. The moon. Um, and a re uh, it's hard for me to explain remote viewing, but it's sort of, um, I want to say, a projection of your consciousness. I'm not quite sure how to explain it, but he could... Um, he could tap in and see the moon, uh, what was going on there. And, they, and he had uh, proven himself because he uh, remote viewed Jupiter and saw the ring of Jupiter. And so that was true. And so they thought by sending him to the moon, perhaps, that he could give them some information. So he goes uh, um, with his remote viewing and he sees beings on the moon. Uh, he sees uh, structures on the moon. He sees uh, workers, he said, creating a laser in the moon. I have his book, uh, Penetration. And so I had uh, gone back and sort of uh, reviewed and researched these things. Uh, he was someone who uh, I trust because of his track record that he had, you know, witnessed something up there. Uh, there is a story, uh, well, he said, actually, that uh, the uh, the beings up there had sensed him, and they were humanoid. Uh, had, they had sensed him and were able to somehow consciously, or I don't know how they did it, but followed him, you know, back somehow to Earth, and, and they really frightened him because they could uh, sense him. Wow. Anyway, for more information on that, his his book is Penetration, and of course he explains it much better than 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 I can. But that's uh, the summary. Of what happened <laughs> so yeah, yeah he said that they're up there and also uh if if you're at all interested in contactees there there are um some people who are in contact with extraterrestrial beings and a few have said they've gone to the moon on ships with their extraterrestrial companions and they uh, uh at least uh, three of them have said that there are beings on the moon. Uh, they noted uh, areas that had even some sort of vegetation on the moon, uh, areas with water on the moon. Um, and one indicated that there's a bit more uh, atmosphere that we are aware of. And um, yeah, oh, one of them said that he had seen, it may, it may have been Ademsky, George Ademsky had said um, he had seen people up there that lived on the moon and they were he saw craft coming in and that they were had a bartering system these ETs where they were uh, switching uh, supplies for minerals from the moon with these others very interesting stuff um, being that the moon is landlocked and we can only see one side who knows what could be going on on the other side of the moon you know so yeah i thought that their stories were interesting too well yeah that was what i was talking about before uh, we uh started discussing that is because i'm into astral travel so much i'd love to go up there and see what's on the dark side of the moon right um but you know what i want to do too since we're about to our last break here is i also want to talk to you about any other contactee stories on the moon and you discussing that about Ingo Swan kind of made me think about the Betty and Barney Hill case too. Like when they went through their regressions and they talked about the things they saw that he said that these beings could just stare, would stare him down and made him like paralyzed in fear from it. You know, mm. uh, like, like they were communicating through him, but without speaking mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. really uh, powerful form of telekinesis or something that they had over him. And to hear a grown man like Barney Hill uh, scream mm -hmm. in terror you know, you can only mm -hmm. imagine, right? Uh, what that's right. like. So, right. Yeah. Um, right. Also, if anybody else has any things or any, any input or any experiences or uh, things they want to talk to about the moon with our guest tonight, the call in number is 1 800 588 0335. This is our last break of the night here on Lighting the Void. Uh, we'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere, guys.
All right, I'm going to grab a uh, drink. I'll be right back. to Lighting the Void, 1-800-588-0335. That's the call-in number if you want to talk to our guest, Constance Victoria Briggs. But you can go to the website, too, for reference is Constance v, uh, ConstanceVictoriaBriggs.com. Excuse me. Author of Encyclopedia of the Moon Mysteries, Encyclopedia of the Unseen World, also the Encyclopedia of Angels, and the Encyclopedia of God, which is something that you brought up uh Constance that really kind of uh, hits home to me too is the Ark story, right? Could have that have been the whole a story that we see in scripture, uh, the deluge story? Could that have actually been about the moon? You know, I'm circling back to that because it that one thing does kind of hit home to me actually. So that must be something that comes up for you a lot as well too. Um, do you mean the the uh, the moon uh, coming in to? Our Earth's vicinity causing the flood of the uh, yeah either causing it Earth. or being some type of arc to create oh. the manifestation of physical life. You know, right. we, we look around on a lot of planets, uh, even and we don't see uh, as much as evidence there is of uh, aliens. We really don't see anything teeming with life like the Earth is, right? Right. But right. The, the most mysterious thing that sets us apart from other planets. Besides the perfection and the distance of the sun is the moon, our moon and its orbit. It's really the, it's mysterious activity. Um, I, That's I, right. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no. You, <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah, there's, there's, there's no other moon like it in our solar system. That's all I was going to say. Yeah, so it makes me think for sure that it's some type of catalyst for human life, for consciousness to be alive in physical form. Um, and even in some ways, uh, if you study like dreaming and astral travel, it also seems to be not only the thing now, just hear me out. Cause I know this is going to sound weird, sound weird, but not only the thing that keeps us in bodies, but all but keeps us conscious, but also the thing that kind of keeps us trapped in the body. Maybe hmm. if that makes sense. Um, wow. Yeah, I hadn't be- thought of that because reading these, uh, esoteric scriptures and stuff they talk about our lunar bodies that when we learn how to uh, traverse the lunar realms which is the internal realms the dream world the astral realm all this stuff that this is the place where we're supposed to learn to become our solar beings so we have these physical bodies and i don't know if you've heard of this or not but then we have these lunar bodies which we dream in or we have out-of-body experiences in and then once we learn how to develop from there then we have solar bodies where we can travel in starlight and we don't lose our consciousness, so to speak. But the mm-hmm. moon, the moon keeps us in this karmic cycle. So um, that's just what I've studied. And it kind of feels real to me. I'm not sure if you've heard anything of that or discussed that. With I, have, I, I don't know much about that. No, actually, it's very profound, though. I really um, am interested more uh, to learn more about that. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, all of the planets have these energies, and in ancient astrology, you know, the seven ancient planets, uh, they considered the moon to be one of them. Um, you, you know, and they also considered Saturn to be the thing that controls all the rules, laws, regulations, and there's a whole alchemical thing there, too. But um, it, it would make sense, and it does make sense to me that that happens. And even Carl Jung talked about that in his books, in the Red Book of this weird feeling of consciousness like he was in a river of consciousness that ebbed and flowed um but he was also subject to it like maybe a piece of sand would be in the ocean like there's really nothing he could do about it almost as if it trapped his consciousness here in a way so it's kind of strange i don't know i just don't want to bring that up sounds sounds amazing i'm not an 
an expert in that area, but I really, uh, I, I like it. Now, now you've had uh, several uh, experiencers talk to you about this, right? Uh, what are some of the other things that they've seen on the moon that we haven't discussed? Um, well, you know, I wanted to get into a little bit of uh, some of the structure type things. Sure, that we've seen. yeah. Uh, so uh, one of the weird things that, that uh, have been seen up there are domes, lighted domes that appear and disappear uh, as if someone uh, has, you know, created them. And, you know, it's, it's almost like um, they, they, they need them to, they are on, under the moon and the, the domes, you know, are some sort of uh, technology maybe to, because uh, to, you can see the, the energy coming out of them. Some people believe that, okay, maybe it's uh, helium-3 that you're seeing, you know, glowing, because, you know, there's rumor that, you know, there's, you know, that there's a lot of that up there, and I'm not, not a scientist. I don't know how all that works. But, yeah, these lighted domes have been seen. Um, they'll be there, and then they disappear. Um, hmm. there's, there's one very famous story of astronomers in the 50s who spotted uh, a, what they called a, a bridge, the man, a man-made bridge, they said. Uh, they were, uh, well, this one astronomer had been studying the area, and it just sort of appeared one day. It was 12 uh, miles long, and it reached from one mountain peak to the other, and he said it just popped up. And uh, so another scientist had to come in and, and look at this, too, and, and concur that, you know, he saw it, and then it disappeared. Uh, a few years later, it disappeared. Wow. And, and their, theor their theory was, okay, there are people there, and they made this thing, and when they found out that we were maybe watching it over time very closely, that maybe they just, you know, dismantled it. Um I forgot your question, Joe. Um, no, you. So, I asked you about oh, if contacts have seen, like, uh, what other contacts have seen uh, on there, and you wanted to talk about the structures too. Yeah, yeah, um, that that um, that the structures had been had been seen up there, and uh, you know those kind of things appearing and disappearing. Um, they've seen uh, geometric shaped buildings. They've seen areas that look like they said. Uh, the astronauts that, that that looked like someone might be mining up there, just right. all kinds of all kinds of strange things going on. Um, yeah. There is one area, and it's in a NASA photo, where this there's a light and a circle, and I swear it looks and has been referred to as a stargate. Huh. Some it looks like just like that that TV show that stargate. Like stargate, yeah. This thing is blue, and it has that sort of oval, the uh, circle around it, like some kind of halo or something around it, and it's been dubbed, you know, the Stargate. Right. Um, right. You know, they've seen like there are some strange blue lights that appear on some of the NASA photos that the uh, the astronauts took while up there. They can't explain these things that that sh show up and move around, and they're very pretty. By wow. the way, I've seen the pictures. So. So the moon is just full of mysteries, and uh, th that is amazing, too. i got to get into this more. Uh, let's see what we have on the phone lines. There are phone callers here, I have to say, to our guest. 978, area code, you're on the air with Constance. Victoria Briggs, who are you speaking with? Uh, the Night Stalker. It's happening. Calling from work. The Night Stalker. What's up, brother? I'm getting a little echo here, Joe, but I'm going to try to uh, ignore it. So if I, if I ramble, it's because I'm yeah, hearing go, Just go ahead. What's your question? But, um, so, uh, two quick questions. One mm -hmm. is, um, you mentioned Constance, the uh, how these things are coming in and out of um, out of the moon, and it could be the Stargate or whatever. Uh, I know Crow Triple Seven thinks that it, that's exactly what it is—that the moon is is a portal, and he traces it to Hindu astrology and the moon being Ketu and K uh, the sun being Rahu. These uh, they represent as deities, and um, they're like Ketu specifically is um, supposed to have properties of like life creation. So Joe, that ties into what you're talking about with like have a, having the special um, quality of like to, to bring life on the planet and a consciousness connection. And, um, but it also is known for having a mystery light. So my question is, have you heard, this is a really weird one, but have you heard the idea that the moon is actually supplying its own kind of light somehow? And people have been talking about it, um, 
apparently with like a really with a with a thermometer that goes to like a few decimal points you can um take the temperature in uh of the um the 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 moonlight and then next to it in moon in, in the shade so no moonlight and it's actually um warmer um without the moonlight so in, like mm. basically the moon is providing cold light it's giving off cold light so people point to um there's different theories about it being fake and that's, that's why but it's also the idea that it's two different types of light one the, the sun being septic and the, and the moon being antiseptic and it's like a life and death cycle that's naturally baked into the, to the that, system that we're in that would make yeah. sense wow. uh esoterically for sure interesting stuff mm-hmm. night stalker mm-hmm. very, very interesting. interesting thank you yeah, yeah. um but a, a great show you guys yeah thanks for calling thank do, you, you do, thank you you, you ever heard anything like that about no, that i didn't did not know know that <laughs> i didn't either i didn't either that's but that, pretty amazing i i really love that comment yeah yeah that would make sense uh based on a lot of the esoteric teachings and stuff too uh let's see on line two here we have uh five six three area code looks like uh, maybe new mexico you're on the air who are you speaking with oh hey joe it's me steven in illinois <clears throat> that's I illinois can't... okay what's up brother hi uh, actually, it's just at five six three is Iowa. Just to let you know, but I'm I'm in Illinois. But I don't know. My phone anyway, line system's um, all jacked up. But no, what? No, what's on your mind? You know, but, uh, well, I just had a question about uh, the moon. Is how as far as how it appears? Um, I did. I had seen um, a documentary on Di- Gaia about that, uh, about how the moon is and what it looks like. But do you have you heard of any theory that they covered about? actually what it looks like because what we see is actually a muted version basically mm-hmm. like it's more colorful than what we actually can see have you heard right that? right right so um you know there was uh, one of the astronauts uh his name is alan bean uh when he retired he started painting uh, i don't know if you've heard this or not but he made paintings of what he saw while he was up there and his paintings uh, are full of color, um, you oh. know, uh, of the moon, on the moon. Uh, basically, the moon has color. It's not just this uh, white plaster of Paris looking, you know, object. And so, yeah, I have yeah. heard of it. And it's something that I don't know, you know, why that isn't shared. But definitely, if you've got someone who walked there and he's trying to show you what he's seen, I mean, Look him up, Alan Bean. His his work is is phenomenal and is is full of color. It's all it's it's all wow. about his trip on the moon. Mm-hmm. Is it like more co- like the all the colors in the rainbow, or is it? I mean, yeah. obviously only yeah. the ones I we mean, can see. I mean, I don't but... want to say that it's it, the colors weren't as in his paintings aren't as brilliant as the rainbow. They're they're muted, but they're color. You know, there are some blues and some greens and you know and some and some reds in there. You know. Um, so yeah, there is more color on the moon than I think has has been uh, shared with us, and I, I have no idea um, why why that can be something we know. So. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Very Go ahead. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Thanks for giving us a call. Anybody yeah. else wants to call in and talk about the moon with our guest tonight? You can. It's one eight hundred five eight eight zero three three five. Full. This thing is just full of mysteries this is the most mysterious satellite that we see in space every night and it's what i'm still learning about new mysteries today that's crazy about this thing so never heard of the light that, yeah one of the reasons I, I i put this little book together is is so that you know people who haven't heard this information before can maybe you know uh or go and or you can google um and and just you know do their own research just find a little uh, entry in there you know, you can look up uh, the astronauts, you can look up their names, you can look up, um, you know, who might be on the on the moon, or, you know, just, you know, flip through it. It's very, you know, interesting. Look up structures, lights, um, you know, and do your own research. I, I just think that we should know. I think that the information should get out. I think that uh, most of the people who were, around, who were around when they were doing the missions to the moon have passed on. And uh, people don't know that they could just go to the you know NASA website and, and, and look at some cool photos that were taken up there, um, and that it has such an interesting history, and that yeah there's something going on, and it will be interesting when they return in 2024. They're talking about to you know what they find, 
you know, um, if you believe that uh, we went to the moon, we only, uh, you know, cover, well, less, less than 1% of the moon's surface. There's a lot, you know, that hasn't been explored. Um, so I, I suggest people do their own research, you know, gain some information and, uh, you know, maybe we can all kind of <laughs> one day know what, what's actually happening there. I hope so, because that is really fascinating. Um, I hope that we do learn that. But, but do you think anything's going to come of it with all of the, the moon mining that's going on between China, Russia, and the United States? Like, surely we're going to get some feedback. Uh, obviously, uh, anybody that's into conspiracy is going to say they're going to keep a bunch of stuff from us. But uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're, they really want to bring us to the moon, too. So maybe we'll all get a chance to see or well, learn more about it. I don't know. Well, you know, there's going to be some, I think, some competition. And I don't know uh, how long they can, you know, keep a lid on things because someone's going to come forward and, and talk more about, you know, what they've seen. Some of the other countries have taken pictures, too, um, that, you know, have, have had uh, mysterious images in them. You know, we've had pictures, for example, of uh, monuments that were mysterious. Um so did Russia, I mean, Soviet Union at that yeah. time, uh, took uh, some pictures of, of monuments. Um, China has had uh, some strange things happen. They sent up a probe that stopped working, and, and, the, and uh, the officials said there, oh, they think maybe there was some extraterrestrial intervention, you know, with uh, that probe not working. So once, uh, I think there's going to be a race to the truth. I don't think that we... Uh, you know, official want to be the last to, you know, make this formal announcement that, hey, they really did, you know, find something up there. It's not like it was in the 60s when they were, you know, kind of trying to cover things up. There's too many people going up now. So, um, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we'll start discovering some more to if they if they don't manage to destroy each other from their own greed from mining the moon. Maybe yeah. they'll take the more exploratory approach, which was what I'm hoping for. And some of us regular citizens that have enough guts will go up there and check it out and let us know what's really going on, you know. But right, uh, right. So they're they're saying that they're going to be that there might might be mining for helium three, and you know whoever uh, gets to that first is going to be you know the most powerful. I don't know, a nation on earth or something. I right. don't know anything about that stuff, but that's you know, just what I, I've heard that they, they may be mining, for, you know, looking for that. Yeah. What, what are some of your, out of all of the mysteries of, that we've discussed, and I'm sure there's many more, but since we're running short of time, I kind of want to ask you this last here, like what is the, your favorite mystery of, mm -hmm. of the moon? So when, uh, when Apollo 17... Uh, the last um, Apollo mission, and the last men who walked on the moon. By this time, uh, they had a little uh, dune buggy kind of thing where the astronauts could drive around the lunar surface. And uh, these astronauts were, were going on along in their little buggy <laughs> uh, about their business. And um, they, uh, the, the audience uh, on Earth was watching. And as the story goes, Walter... Cronkite was the announcer and as these astronauts were driving and the camera was pointing forward it spotted something it spotted uh, what is said to be a large structure uh, rectangular that looked to be the same material as the surface of the moon which you know is very this very uh, fine kind of dust um, but the same uh, kind of color, it, it just kind of blended in with the moon, except it was a, a structure in front of them. And so the Walter Cronkite is said, said, that looks like a, ma a man-made structure like that. And then the feed was cut. The feed Whoa. was cut yeah. after he said that for 20 minutes. And when they came back, uh, he said, oh, they told me that the little lunar rover, which is what the buggy was called, the lunar rover accidentally took a picture of itself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that I do remember seeing that. I watched that, too. I remember that. That's pretty uh, trippy. 
Let's go to the, <laughs> we got like a few minutes left. Let's go to the phone lines here, 406 area code. You're on the air with Constance Victoria Briggs. Who are we speaking with? Hi, this is Catalina. Hey, Catalina. How are you? So, oh, doing good. So, uh, yeah, I've done a lot. I just do like you too, Constance, on the moon. And um, so there's been a lot of whistleblowers, a lot of books written of all different things that have been going on there and different theories. So I was right there with you most of the show. I definitely heard a lot of that um, different information. I think there's a possibility that the Space Force is going to be doing a lot of disclosure. That's the kind of the word that's been going around, that we're going to get a lot more uh, information. So that could be coming here pretty soon. And um, whatever's been going on on the moon, I, I've found it interesting in the beginning of the show, Joe was saying that he was looking at the moon and there was a time in my life where I used to go out at sea at night and uh, on full moons and going out and then the full moon's reflection on the ocean when it's got the um, swells coming in. And I yeah. used to just yeah. literally just fall in love with the moon. I mean, it was like it was a lover to me. And that's what I find yeah. interesting about the moon, too. Despite everything that's on there, have that, has that ever happened to you? Yeah, but yeah. We fell in love with it? Me? Oh, I fell in love. Yeah, go ahead, Constance. I, I fell in love with the moon, yeah, you, you know, when I was a child. I mean, I still run when there's a, still those huge full moons. We just had the wolf moon. Um, just magnificent. I still run in, in to the window and run outside, and my family are like, you know, it's the moon. You've seen it before. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but yeah, that, that's who I am too. I, I have followed in my car, you know, the moon when it's that big, just to find a place to sit and look at it, you know. So I agree with you, and I would love for them to, nice. to uh, come forward and tell us more. Yeah, we can all. We, too. Well, thank you. Thanks for your call, Kat. Yeah, I agree too. We can all only hope that that when it, whatever they're doing, the space force thing, and you know, I'd like to. I know there's a lot of conspiracy around it, but I would like to think and hope for the best when it comes to that. You know, um, that we're going to get some real information and reveal some of these mysteries. You know, uh, Richard Hoagland and many other people. And you too, Constance. A lot of people have discussed this thoroughly, and we want the answers to it. And it's this has been a really cool show to do about the moon. It's the first one I've ever done, and um, I can't believe that. I was thinking about that when we started the show. Like, it's my favorite thing in the sky. How can I have not done one about the moon? I've done one about Mars. but So, yeah, thank you for coming on and talking to us. And, and as far as your book go, uh, your books, where can people find your books, the best oh, place to get them? Amazon, of course. Amazon, <laughs> okay. On Amazon, right? Um, uh, you can get it on Amazon or Google it or order it from Barnes & Noble or go to my publisher, which is um, uh, the Ancient Aliens People Adventures at Unlimited Press. Um, it's there. Um, you know, just... Uh, and Or you can uh, also get it on my website or if you want to contact me with questions, ConstanceVictoriaBriggs.com. Also on Facebook, I have a Moon Mysteries page where I, I talk about mysteries there and, I, and I, I post cool pictures and, you know, cool information. And, you know, uh, so, yeah, look for that. Also, there's Constance Victoria Briggs page where, um, you know, I, I, I post some, uh, some things there, too. So Fantastic. I'm on Twitter, too. Twitter, too, guys. <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Everybody go give her a follow and. And check out our books. And thank you so much for coming on uh, Lighting the Void. It was a real pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. And, and thanks to you and, and, the, and the callers and the listeners. So thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you. I want to say the same thing. Thank you guys for calling in. Thanks for listening tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night with open lines as we head into the weekend. If you're listening on the Fringe FM, uh, which I'm pretty sure that's the only place you can listen to the show. But if you're listening, stay tuned for The Secret Teachings with Ryan Gable. You guys have a good night. Sleep tight. Good night. Sweet dreams. All right. Thank you so much for coming on, guys. It was really cool. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope they liked it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my audience? <laughs> Talking about the moon? You bet. 
Okay. Thank sure. you. Thank you for letting me uh, letting me chat with you, Joe. Oh, sure. We'll talk again sometime. Absolutely. Anytime. Anytime. All right. All right. You have a good night. Take, take good care. Bye now.